5 is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate for the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate or encourage any illegal activity and advise all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws by visiting normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers of Normal Show Live are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of Normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think that we need to rethink and decriminalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents... Normal Show Live, Marijuana Nation. Now, here's your host, Normal's Outreach Coordinator, Radical Russ Belleville. Good afternoon, tokers and tokets, and welcome. It is Thursday, November 17th, 2011, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. I hope you're having a great day. I want to give a shout out to all the occupiers around the country today. On this N17 day, I was uh, uh, awakened this morning watching the uh, the protests here in Portland, Oregon. I- amazing thing here: the uh, protesters the la- the night before said they were going to march across the steel bridge uh, to get to downtown. Uh, and then, of course, by marching across the steel bridge, would shut that down, right? So they're going to get get there at eight o'clock and march across the bridge to shut it down, and then they'd be on their way. So the Portland police, in their ultimate wisdom, got there at four in the morning shut down the bridge, prevented the protesters from going across the bridge at 8 in the morning, stayed there till 9.30, and then the protesters finally went under the bridge on the lower uh, deck and walked across anyway. So, to recap, protesters might have shut down the bridge for 20, 30 minutes walking across at 8 in the morning. Cops instead shut it down from 4 a.m., to 9.30. <laughs> Crazy stuff going on here with Occupy Portland. And that's going to be part of the subject of our rant today at the end. I'm going to talk to you about occupying 420. I know we've heard that from DJ Kuti, but I want to talk about it conceptually. So we'll get to that in, in our radical rant at the end of the show today. Uh, you may notice I am flying solo this week. Cannabis Carrie is on vacation. She'll be back uh, when we come back in December. I can uh, almost guarantee that. <laughs> so we will uh, talk to her then and also uh, the rest of the gang will get this all worked out and get everyone back on the show but for now i'm flying solo so i'm bringing you the news today right after the first break and that includes news of a tunnel from san diego uh, to mexico that yields 17 tons of marijuana in the most recent bust Uh, raids in seattle area are now followed up by raids in montana that's right more dea raids this time in the state of montana we've got colorado the state of colorado lowering their medical marijuana fees and some sort of problem with about 3200 of their medical marijuana applications. Another tragic story of a transplant patient whose transplant was denied because of his legal medical marijuana use and uh, some commentary on the DEA raids in Seattle and some of the stuff the cops were saying in their affidavits that really pisses me off and I just got to mention it. Then at uh, 20 after the hour, we do our Groovin' Thursday and today I'm taking the reins of Groovin' Thursday, giving John Doe the day off because I got more of that music from Atlanta, Georgia, when I was just there last weekend, Mighty High Koo is going to give us some beats, uh, and the song is called Revolution. We might even get them to call into the show. We're still trying to work that out. And then, Southern California scene with Terry Joyce, Heather Schaefer, the daughter of Dr. Molly Fry and Dale Schaefer, currently serving five years in California. She'll be with us right after this. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. 
There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that gives us these precious rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak with my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. Hey, this is Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger Seeds, TGAgenetics.com, and you're listening to The Normal Network. Weedmaps.com. I'm Radical Russ from Normal. In my job as outreach coordinator, I travel every month, and when I'm on the road, I need a fast, accurate way to find the medical marijuana dispensaries in the area. So I turn to Weedmaps.com. Weedmaps.com has the best dispensary locator online or on your mobile device. Search by zip code or let Weedmaps find you, and in seconds you'll have the addresses, phone numbers, and customer service reviews for the medical marijuana dispensaries in the local area. Weedmaps.com also has a section devoted to helping you find a doctor who understands and recommends medical marijuana under your state's law. You can even check prices on the Medical Marijuana Stock Exchange. Coming soon, you'll even be able to find the listings of normal attorneys and chapters, local head shops and grow shops, and the best weed-friendly businesses. Weedmaps.com has the information you need to be an informed cannabis consumer. Visit Weedmaps.com today, a proud sponsor of the Normal Network. Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis. It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. Cannabis Carry's on vacation this week. I'm Radical Russ with your Normal News. A San Diego drug tunnel bust yields 17 tons of marijuana. This coming to us from CBS News Crime Cider Division. Uh, San Diego, about 17 tons of marijuana was seized in the discovery of a cross-border tunnel that authorities said Wednesday was one of the most significant secret drug smuggling tunnels ever found on the U.S.-Mexico border. The tunnel, discovered Tuesday, stretched about 400 yards and linked warehouses in San Diego and Tijuana, authorities said. U.S. authorities seized around nine tons of the drug from inside a truck and at a warehouse in San Diego's Ote Mesa area, while Mexican authorities recovered about eight tons south of the border. Authorities spoke at a news conference surrounded by packages of seized dope festooned with labels of Captain America, Sprite, and Bud Light. The markings are codes to identify the owners. Photos taken by Mexican authorities show an entry blocked by bundles that were likely stuffed with marijuana, said Paul Beeson, chief of the Border Patrol San Diego sector. Tunnel walls were lined with wood supports, and the passage was equipped with lighting and ventilation systems. As U.S. authorities tighten their noose on land, tunnels have emerged as a major tack to smuggle marijuana. Smugglers also use single-engine wooden boats to ferry bales of marijuana up the Pacific coast and pilot low-flying aircraft that look like motorized hang gliders to make lightning-quick drops across the border. More than 70 tunnels have been found on the border since October 2008, surpassing the number of discoveries in the previous six years. Many are clustered around San Diego, California's Imperial Valley, and Nogales, Arizona. California is popular because its clay-like soil is easy to dig with shovels. In Nogales, smugglers tap into vast underground drainage canals. Well, once again, this just shows us that no matter what you do, you cannot repeal the law of supply and demand. And so long as prohibition keeps the price and profit margins of marijuana absurdly high, there's no expense to which the smugglers will go to to get the marijuana to the willing customers. They will dig tunnels. They will use planes. They will use boats. They're using submarines. They're building submarines in the jungles of Latin America to smuggle drugs into this country. They're Firing bales of weed across our border with catapults, medieval siege engine technology here, being used to get the marijuana to a willing audience. And I can tell you this, American growers would be more than happy to take that business away from Mexican criminals and let you tax them in order to help balance budgets and take care of social services right here in the United States. At a time when we have crumbling infrastructure, when we have city and state budgets that are 
pinched to the bare minimum and we've got a population reaching 10, 12% unemployment, out of work for years, just begging for jobs. It's about time we started allowing those jobs to go to law-abiding Americans instead of torturing and murdering Mexican criminals. From the Great Falls Tribune, Great Falls, Montana, officials raid Montana marijuana shops. Federal law enforcement officials on Tuesday and Wednesday executed 12 criminal search warrants and four civil seizure warrants on medical marijuana operations in four Montana towns. According to U.S. Attorney Michael Cotter's office, the crackdown was the culmination of a 12-month multi-agency investigation into what authorities say were criminal drug trafficking activities in Kalispell, Missoula, Summers, and Whitefish. The four civil seizure warrants executed at financial institutions in Missoula seek an unspecified amount of money, according to a news release issued by the U.S. Attorney's Office on Wednesday afternoon. The release states that warrants were issued based on judicial findings that probable cause exists to believe the operations were, quote, involved in criminal enterprises that have violated the Controlled Substances Act related to marijuana, a Schedule I controlled substance, end quote. Authorities allege that the premises or property raided this week were involved in the illegal manufacture or distribution of marijuana, conspiracy, and money laundering. While 16 states, including Montana, have legalized some form of medical marijuana use, the federal government still considers the drug an illegal controlled substance with a high potential for abuse and no accepted medical use. Special agent in charge Kevin Merrill of the DEA said in a statement, quote, The DEA will continue to enforce all laws under the Controlled Substances Act, including the targeting of drug trafficking organizations involved in the cultivation and distribution of marijuana, end quote. Well, again, it shows how medical marijuana laws do not go far enough. And so long as you just try to carve a narrow exception for sick people's use of cannabis, there will always be the authorities trying to catch the healthy people using cannabis that will always start stepping on to your medical rights. It doesn't matter why a person chooses to use cannabis. We need to defend all of us. And one of the things I fear is that in medical marijuana, it took some of the most compelling stories for legalization and and carved an exception for them thinking that somehow their use was better, different, or more justifiable than anyone else's use of cannabis. This continued dichotomy, this, this false dichotomy of trying to separate people who are healthy enough to put in a cage and people that are sick enough to have compassion for has got to stop, and we've got to stop it not only in every state, but also at the federal level. Please take a look at the bills currently circulating in the U.S. Congress. Get some co-sponsors for those. Don't forget three Republicans Republican presidential candidates, Herman Cain, Ron Paul, and Governor Gary Johnson have all pledged their support for states' rights of medical marijuana. It's in time that this becomes an important issue, just as important as gun rights, abortion, gay and lesbian issues, civil defense, any of those issues, and it's time to hold our politicians accountable. From the westward in uh, Denver, Colorado, we get note about the decrease in the medical marijuana fee. This uh, comes from the CDPHE, Colorado Department of Public Health, uh, spokesman Mark Sally, confirms that a $35 fee will go into effect January 1st, 2012. This is a reduction in the fee in Colorado from $90 to $35. But uh, another piece of information coming out in this new story are 3,200 patient applications that are currently on hold while the department tries to verify the signatures of the physicians who made those recommendations. Uh, some news coming out of this says that it might have something to do with it being physician assistances physician assistants rather than uh, the physicians themselves. We will continue to keep you posted as we get more updates on this. But uh, because of the increase of red card holders in the past few years, that's what they call their medical marijuana card in uh, Colorado, CDPHE rep said more people are sharing the estimated $3.36 million cost of running the registry. Uh, after roughly three months of no doubt pouring over the thousands of letters that resulted, they're changing the price from 90 to $35 uh, uh, because the, uh, they're, they're covering all the costs. They, they've written this into their law where they only charge fees necessary to cover the cost of the program. And the reason this is such an important story to me is here in the state of Oregon, our state bureau 
program, medical marijuana program, just raised their fees from $100 to $200, even though, just like the Colorado program, that $100 was more than covering the cost of the program. But they did it specifically to raise money to cover other areas of the budget, to cover other shortfalls in the state budget. Look, if you want to tax tokers, don't tax the 10% that are sick and disabled. Tax the 90% of us that would be more than willing to be legal taxed users of cannabis. Of course, you know my background uh, covering the story of Tim Guerin and our own Ganja John when it comes to transplants. So this next story coming from Toke of the Town uh, infuriates me. Americans for Safe Access points out that a medical marijuana patient in Los Angeles with inoperable liver cancer has been removed from Cedars-Sinai Medical Center's transplant list after testing positive for marijuana. The uh, 63-year-old... Yeah, the 63-year-old medical marijuana patient, Norman B. Smith, was diagnosed with inoperable liver cancer in 2009 and sought treatment from the internationally known Cedars sinai in L.A.'s Smith's oncologist at the medical center. Dr. Stephen Miles approved of his medical marijuana use as a means to deal with the effects of chemotherapy and pain from an unrelated back surgery. In September 2010, Smith became eligible for a liver transplant, but after testing positive for marijuana, the marijuana his own oncologist recommended that he use, by the way. In February, he was removed from the transplant list. Smith's cancer was in remission until just recently, but now he is scheduled to undergo radiation treatments in a few days. So, so the guy had cancer, had been using medical marijuana. His cancer went into remission. He stops using medical marijuana so that he can get a liver transplant. His cancer comes back. Interesting. Interesting. Medical marijuana advocacy group Americans for Safe Access issued a letter on Thursday urging the Cedar sinai Transplant Depart Department to promptly relist Smith for a liver transplant. The letter also urges Cedar sinai to change its transplant eligibility policy. Now, of course, they note the cases of transplant lists uh, in California, Hawaii, Oregon, and Washington where patients have died uh, because they've been told to... Uh, not use medical marijuana if they couldn't get their uh, their transplant because of their medical marijuana use. Nevertheless, uh, the director of Cedar sinai Liver Transplant Program compared Smith's legal medical marijuana use to, quote, substance abuse, end quote. In a letter sent to Smith in May, doctor the doctor indicated that the Liver Transplant Center, quote, must consider issues of substance abuse seriously since it does often play a role in the evolution of diseases that may require transplantation and may adversely impact a new organ after transplant. Despite this doctor's assertions, an independent study has shown that marijuana use has no impact on the survival rate of transplant recipients. <laughs> And in our final news, following up on the DEA raids in Seattle and Tacoma and uh, Olympia yesterday, uh, we get another letter here, another uh, uh, article from Toke of the Town, pointing out some uh, reporting from Seattle Weekly uh, that had gone over the court documents, the affidavits that were used to uh, uh, raid one of these places, the Game Collective Lounge, G-A-M-E, Game Collective Lounge. That's the Greenpeace Alternative Medicine and Education Lounge. And uh, the informant reported seeing several people getting high on the premises. Well, yes, it's a patient lounge. So they were medicating on the premises. So you needed to put someone undercover to figure that out, huh? Uh, but they go on to say, now this is, this is the part that is infuriating. Uh, the DE agent writes that he became suspicious because many customers were in their 20s and 30s and didn't fit his preconceived idea of the way he felt medical marijuana patients should look. Quote, I did not observe anyone that required a wheelchair, crutches, or a walker to enter the game collective. I know from personal experience, as well as observations of patients suffering from illnesses, such as certain kinds of cancer, AIDS, or multiple sclerosis, the physical toll such illnesses take on a person's body, as well as the side effects of their treatment. I know through experience and observation that hair loss, weight loss, lack of energy, difficulty in the ability to walk or move limbs, or labored breathing are common and observable signs of such illnesses. During this surveillance, I did not observe anyone who entered or exited the game collective exhibiting these signs. <sighs> Okay, so that uh, years and years of medical training you took 
when you were uh, in the academy for the drug enforcement agency allowed you to have the power to by sight and from a distance diagnose whether someone has, say, epilepsy or Crohn's disease or severe seizures of any kind or chronic pain. You alone, sir, with all your incredible medical training hiding behind your badge and bulletproof vest, you were able to, by sight alone, determine whether people were medically uh, able to use marijuana. <sighs> Sad. <laughs> I love this idea. Medical marijuana. Medicine of last resort. Gotta be super sick. Oh, you don't look sick enough. Let's put you in a cage. We'll be right back. It's 20 after the hour. And we have to take a short break. If you know what I mean. Please support these sponsors who support Normal Show Live. Oh, have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man, reefer man? If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Starfish Designs, makers of the original Gandalf. I'm Radical Russ, and when I want to relax, I always have my 17-inch long original Gandalf from Starfish Designs nearby. The hand-blown borosilicate glass is strong and easy to clean, and the design is sleek and sophisticated. Starfish designs are available from Bend, Oregon at a glass retailer near you. For locations, call 541-788-GLASS. That's 541-788-4527. Normal Show Live welcomes all of our lurking guests from Bong TV Live. <laughs> But be careful, stick around here too long and you might learn something. Normal Show Live reminds you to never consent to a search. If you're holding and you consent, in most states you will be arrested immediately and you will go to jail. If you don't consent to a search, police may try to intimidate you by threatening to bring in drug-sniffing dogs or try to fool you by saying things will go easier if you consent. Yeah, easier for them, sure. Stand your ground, refuse the search, and ask the officer if you're free to go. If they still detain you and eventually find your contraband, you'll be no more busted than if you had allowed the search. But by refusing the search, your attorney has a chance to win your acquittal before a judge. If you consent to the search, your attorney's hands are tied. You can find a list of normal legal committee attorneys specializing in marijuana cases by visiting the Find a Lawyer link at normal.org. It's time for your daily Toker Tunes, the best in 420 friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. Today we bring you tunes for Groovin' Thursday, our salute to all the dopest beats and killer rhymes that we find in the best of rap, hip-hop, soul, R&B, and funk. If you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Tune. All right, Tokers, time to get a little dirty south on you. Heading down to Hotlanta for this next group. I met these guys out in Atlanta at the Capital Cannabis Jam, the Reform Jam I was just at last weekend. Uh, they're called Mighty High Coup. Now, when I first heard it, I thought it was Mighty Haiku, like a Japanese poem that is a five, seven, five syllable structure. No, 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 not haiku. High coup, like the overthrow of a government by stoned people. <laughs> so, Mighty High Coup. You can find them on Facebook. Uh, they're also on Twitter and at their website, MightyHighCoup.com. That'd be H-I-G-H-C-O-U-P. Mighty High Coup. And according to their Facebook page, Mighty High Coup is a collective of Mr. SOS, Ricky Raw, and A-Bomb. Each of these MCs bring a different variety of hip-hop to the table. Mr. SOS, previously of Cunning Linguists, 
I love that band name, is the lyricist of the group with strong ties to the purest underground sound associated with his current label, QN5. A-bomb of the homebody slows down the pace a bit with a southern swag and party guy attitude. His rhymes usually include a checklist of beer, weed, and women three of my favorite things. Last, Ricky Raw brings it all together with solid sample heavy production and a rhyme style that bridges the gap between the polar opposites of his group mates, Mr. SOS and A-Bomb. Altogether, the trio is mighty high and here to take over. We're going to bring you a song from their latest album called Boom Rap. This is Mighty Haiku One, with Revolution. Notable or successful stroke or move. Two, a sudden violence and illegal seizure of power from a government. We want a revolution. We the people, though it may be illegal. Declare we will share what's fair with the needy people. I'm giving the people to defeat the evils. Made of sun and water, marijuana shouldn't be illegal. Do you hear me, people? Do you see me, mom? Sometimes I really be free. You gotta bring the bomb. Kind of like Vietnam, everybody sing along, yeah, we to know you're strong. We want a revolution. Y'all want a revolution? You better get recruiting. Practice patience, execution. That's how we give it to them. And we ain't never losing. Get with the winning team. Spent too much of my life in the company of misery. Started the plot and scheme. Got with that triple beam. We about to take the thing. Hit them with that laser beam. Ain't gotta say a thing. My DJ says it just right. You never losing as long as you fight the good fight. They tired of all the same, and they know who's to blame. We need to make a change. We want a revolution, and we gon' burn it down. If they don't hear us out, not everybody shout. We want a revolution. We want a revolution. We want a revolution. We want a revolution. Put your fists up in the air like you mean it. Hot damn it. If you sick of being treated, how we treat it? Damn it. It's a coup, and we will lead it if we. We have to win this A, A, P, D in the industry, in the D, E, A, and all them lames that had all that gay shit to say about an album to the moon. Then they dropped an A, the ones went boom. Then they hopped on the ticket like we had room with all these chicks that's spreading rumors about how we might have fucked their friends. Or about what was happening. We had been back in high school to all their friends. But they don't even know our name. And they damn sure don't know our game. So why they playing with us? Zone 6 and Zone 3 is where we stay. If they ain't staying with us, then why they give a fuck about how we play? This is a revolution. And it starts right here, right now, today. Let's go. They tired of all the same, and they know who's to blame. We need to make a change. We want a revolution, and we gon' burn it down. If they don't hear us out, not everybody shout. We want a revolution, we want a revolution, we want a revolution, we want a revolution. Who shot JFK? If we don't get them, they gon' get us all. They try to tell me that it was Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh no, he couldn't have the Secret Service called off. Don't believe the hype, cause most of the time. It's really hogwash. It's not a lost cause. We fighting for our freedom. I can't think of a better reason to give my life. You can ask Mumia what he thinks about this government, the country, and how they running it. Then ask him why he thinks Martin Luther King was shot in public. Then his name thrown on a sign inside of every poor community. Is it cause he was preaching unity or exposing federal lunacy? 9 11, Pearl Harbor, Tuskegee, MK Ultra, CIA, Skull and Bones. Must I really go on any further? I think I must, and so I will. How many more people should be killed before we see that this is where we, we want a revolution? They killed our heroes in their prime, then dumb you down so you don't mind. I didn't want your gun so you can't fight. Time for a revolution. Racial profiling still exists, and then you wonder why I'm pissed. So say this why you pump your fist. We want a revolution. The CFR and the FBI, let's pull the plug and let them die. Next 4th of July, maybe we should try to start a revolution. We want a revolution. We want a revolution. We want a revolution. You want a copy of that song for your iPod? Check out the Daily Toker tunes at the Stash blog by surfing to stash.normal.org and choosing media and then Toker tunes from the main menu. Cannaboids and health. Cannabinoids. 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 Why am I having trouble saying that? Cannabinoids. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Cannabinoids. Oh, uh, what a gift. Flame on, flame on if you can. You looking for the dope weed? Fire it up. Flame on, flame on if you can. You looking for the dope weed? Pony boy's a man. Flame on, flame on if you can. You looking for the dope weed? Flame on, flame on. Get the light up. If you burn blood. 
Oh, Piggy can run. Hi, this is Alan St. Pierre, Executive Director of Normal. We are the oldest, largest, and best-known marijuana law reform organization in America. And it's all because of your support. Take some time to join Normal at www.normalnorml.org. Your membership supports this podcast, our websites, our policy research and analysis, and our annual conferences. Changing marijuana laws is a grassroots effort, and it starts with you, the stakeholder. Join Normal today and add your voice to the millions of cannabis consumers who demand equality with our beer drinking friends. As High Times Senior Cultivation Editor, I'm often called into the field and asked to sample or even identify exotic strains of marijuana in their natural habitat. Now, for the first time, I've compiled more than 120 of my favorite strains into this single field guide designed to fit into your pocket as you travel the world in search of your favorite plant. From a friend's closet grow room to the wilds of Northern California, this single guide covers all of today's best known strains, plus heirlooms and throwbacks, including High Times quality photos and information on each variety's genetic heritage and growing characteristics, plus my personal notes on aroma, flavor, and potency. So this is Danny Danko, author of the official High Times Field Guide to Marijuana Strains, wishing you good times and great ganja. The official High Times Field Guide to Marijuana Strains is available at hightimes.com and finer bookstores. Weed. That's Hoobie Valley, Hoobie Hub. Weed. Where any office boy or young mechanic... Now it's time for a report from the epicenter of American cannabis culture with our Southern California correspondent. You know her from ComedyNation.com and her appearance as a finalist on season one of NBC's Last Comic Standing. It's our friend, cannabis comedian and marijuana activist, the lovely and talented Terry Joyce. Well, we, we can't forget also known as our own Hollywood Hemptress right here on Thursday nights on the Normal Network. How are you doing, Terry? I am doing really great. Uh, I'm it's glad to... It's always a pleasure to be on the show, uh, Radical Russ. Oh, thank you so much, Terry. How about uh, L.A.? How's the uh, Occupy thing going on down there? Did you get involved well, with you that? Know, yeah, I have been occupying. Uh, and uh, it, it's definitely... It's not for the faint-hearted. Uh, <laughs> tr- truthfully, you have to be in shape to protest. And... Uh, we, I, I don't know, a, a couple nights ago, uh, of course, you know that um, Wall Street was raided, and we were watching it out there, um, projected up against one of the tents, and so, you know, all of a sudden, you know, drums start breaking out, and, you know, we're, we, we head down to the march, and I had this really, really super heavy backpack on me, like 25 pounds, and we're, like, going for days, and I'm, I'm thinking, wow, I'm... I'm wearing out here, so I took a cab back. Is that is that wrong? <laughs> I know. I got to tell you, the marching that I've done here in Portland—that's probably the longest walks I've taken all year. Oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> and today an 84-year-old woman got arrested. Uh, uh, they were in this morning. I'm thinking, wow, God bless her that she had the energy to be out there. <laughs> no kidding. Well, that was something I noticed on the on the Portland coverage today too. Is the the people who were you know civilly disobedient? They were sitting on the road and being arrested one by one. Uh, you know. Uh, gray hair, middle-aged, totally conventional-looking people. I mean, the media keeps trying to portray this as all the fringe anarchists and pierced tattooed and all that kind of stuff. But really, I, all I was seeing on the TV were just normal-looking folks. Yeah, I, it, it, it's a cross-section of people. Uh, you know, there's, there's definitely, um, you know, older people um, that are actually occupying uh, there are people that are, are coming in from different parts of the country that are occupying in different places and being of service in different types, you know, parts of regions of the country. Um, and, you know, just today, um, I, you know, cause I am home today, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, on mainstream media network, well, you know, the teachers are out there pro- protesting in Los Angeles as well. Mm. And, you know, they're holding up signs that are saying, I teach for the 99%. Oh, really good. And let me correct myself from what I said earlier. I shouldn't have said normal looking. I should say conventional looking or <laughs> traditional looking. Okay, so no offense meant. Hey, uh, Terry, let's get to your guest today because we've been trying to get her on the show for a while. We've spoken to her parents on the show before, and so take it away. Let's get to this. 
Yes. Um, today we have Heather Schaefer uh, on, on, on the show. And, um, and, and, of course, you know that her um, parents, Molly Fry and uh, Del Schaefer, are in prison now. Um, they were the first um, people to actually advertise uh, medical marijuana uh, doctors available for, you know, to be, to possibly, you know, see if you could be determined as getting a recommendation. Um, they were very prominent in their city, and, and, you know, I know that probably most of the listeners, you know, me all, are probably already familiar with the story, but she's here to give an update on uh, what is happening. Her father has been in, uh, has been struggling with, with his health, too, mm. as well. Okay. So um, I want to introduce uh, Heather, Heather Schaefer to the show. Heather, welcome, welcome to Normal Show Live. We're glad to have you here. Thank you so much. It's glad I'm glad to be here. You know, the last time I spoke with your mom and dad, uh, they were it was just prior to them going in for their five year mandatory minimum sentence uh, for being, uh, you know, for working as medical marijuana providers. But they were, uh, uh, you know, the, they worked with the city. They worked with the leaders. Everything was on the up and up. And through some really dastardly tactics, the, uh, the they got ta- they got taken down. What is the latest update for Dr. Molly Fry and Dale Schaefer? <clears throat> well, mom is um, currently in Dublin, and uh, you know they went in on May second. They um, they surrendered, and uh, mom went directly from they they surrendered here in Sacramento. They went directly from Sacramento for her to Dublin um, in the Bay Area, and then um, but that is not exactly what happened for my dad. My dad has been through uh, six months of pure hell unfortunately he went from sacramento county to san bernardino county to then um honolulu which sounds really great but he couldn't go outside and he was inside of like a cinder block building basically and uh, was without medications and um all of those um, terrible things and now um he's been transferred to taft which is not a medical facility but at least is somewhere permanent in California where we can go and visit him. And and so people understand what we're talking about. This is not federal j- jail time, prison time we're talking about. These are state prisons and state charges they're serving on, right? No, these are federal. These are federal, charges. okay. Okay, so yes. just trying, but, they, but they're still, all of these prisons you mentioned, aren't they all in California? Um, yeah, the Taft is in California, um, Sacramento County, and San Bernardino County. Um, are obviously state prisons, so mm-hmm. he, yes, um, being um, an attorney who was charged with... Um, oh, obviously state prisons, so he... Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I got feedback. Um, he was uh, he was put in with people who are really, like, criminals. Like, mm-hmm. he, at one point he told me that he was in a room with 150 people um, and somebody had gotten raped the night before. Wonderful. in the room that he was sleeping in. Yeah, that's the kind of news you want to hear. And this is the, the maddening part of it. Well, I guess, you know, uh, when we look at cases like uh, uh, Mark Emery, where he's in Seattle one year, one month, and the next he's in Georgia, and the next he's in, in, in Mississippi. I mean, they're moving them all over the country. Uh, we can at least be thankful they're still close to you in the same state. But is there any guarantee that that's going to remain the case? Are they likely to be moved out of state? At this point, it looks like Taft is going to be his permanent location, okay. which is really we're very excited about because it's now been um, six months, and all five of us kids we have not seen him um, since May. Mm. So that that's hard. That's that's we're a close family, and I think it's true for all families that it's difficult when, especially two parents, have to leave the the scenario at the same time. Right. Um, but um, and mom's in a permanent facility now too. The only problem that um, I'm having and that I'm frustrated with is that his health is really not getting taken care of at all. At this point, he's got pneumonia and um, went in for antibiotics and asked for treatment, and they kind of laughed at him and said, "You know, uh, everybody in this place is sick. I don't know why you're so important." Oh, so <clears throat> this yeah. is, it's it's just inhumane the way uh, you know people. In this country, uh, I think they think of prison as being a place, you know, let's punish the bad guys. And and truly, there are some really reprehensible human beings that we keep in some of our prisons. But for the most part, when he's talking about drug charges and nonviolent offenses, uh, it's just cruel and unusual punishment the way that we treat people, to, to laugh at their sickness. To, and, and your father is, you know, what is he in his, his early 60s, I think? 
Uh, he's in his late 50s, late 50s but yeah. he's also he's a hemophiliac, mm-hmm. so um, he's got a lot of um, damage that's been done to his joints and um, in, to his body in general. And the very first day, I looked the marshals in the eye. That was on the 2nd of May. And I handed them all of his medications, and I said, this is essential to him being able to live. And they said, he will get it. And for the next four days, he got absolutely no narcotics and was forced to withdraw off of 600 milligrams of morphine in a room basically filled with, you know, metal that is, you know, you're throwing up and you're shaking and you're sweating through everything, Mm -hmm. and they didn't care. They don't care. Man. They don't. We're speaking with Heather Schaefer, the daughter of uh, Dr. Molly Fry and Dale Schaefer, currently serving five years on a federal mandatory minimum for being uh, legal medical marijuana caregivers and, and providers in the state of California. Uh, Terry Joyce is with us, Southern California scene. And Terry, I want to give you a chance to uh, open up questions that you might have for Heather. Well, there's just one thing that I do I do want to mention and, and, and have the listeners know um, is that uh, we are wanting... Anybody can send him a letter at this point in time, and we're asking people to be supportive um, and send a letter of fur, you know, of inspiration. Especially, you know, we are heading during the holita- holidays. It's Thanksgiving, Christmas is coming up, and this is a difficult time for people. So, mm-hmm. um, and we're encouraging people to go to the Landa Prison Outreach Program, um, which I know the, uh, the address is Landa Prison Outreach Program dot com. Uh, ste- of course, you know you've had Stephanie Landa on the show right. as well. And uh, as well as PAN, a Patient Ad- Advocacy Network also has a prison outreach program on their website, and you can find them at um, you know cannabissafelife.org. So I just wanted to interject that in there uh, too. Now, uh, and he- we have a website. Yes, Heather, I was oh, going to yeah. say, do you have a website we can get to people? <laughs> we do. It's uh, www.freedocfry.com. Docfry.com. Okay, mm-hmm. so we've got those all posted up in the chat room. I want to encourage people to visit those and get the word out. And you mentioned, you know, how tough it was to have both parents taken away, going away at the same time. And this is, this is, you know, we have there's occasions where married couples are both sentenced in, in a situation like this. But uh, uh, it must compound how difficult it is for your mother to not just be in her own incarceration, but to have to worry about her husband in his incarceration and vice versa. I think it would just make it double the the stress and strain that it would normally be. How is this impacting you and the family as well? Well, absolutely. There is a lot of stress going on. Not only is she worried about him and he's worried about her, but um, on top of it, my um, we've got five of us kids at home. And this, um, I would love to interject my my pet peeve, my thing that I, I'm on, on a soapbox today because I think it's absolutely ridiculous the expectations that the federal government has of the families of federal prisoners. We, every single time, I told you there's been a few times that my dad's been moved from location to location. Every single time, our family is expected to come up with the money to provide him with shoes and clothes and um, everything that he needs. So it's cost us approximately $300 every single time he's moved from one location to another. Mm. And I don't understand how these, how other families who don't have the resources like we have, who, you know, we, we are blessed in the way that we are able to go out and raise money and we have people in our, in our uh, community who are helping us. But what about the other families who don't have those blessings? It's, I mean, it's been nine, not to mention the $300 that it's costing already for, to make sure that they've got the basics of, you know, um, phone time and being able to get on the um, on the email and correspond with family and those very basic things, that's $300 a month per person. But then on top of that, what is going on in our government that we are taking advantage of people at the lowest times in their lives? It is. You know? it's, it's an American tragedy and it's why we uh, fight this every day here at Normal and we will continue to until nobody is behind bars for a plant for whatever reason they might choose to use it. Heather, you know, you're very brave, you know, coming on the show and telling people your story. Uh, what would you suggest for people to do uh, to see that this doesn't happen to someone they love? Um... <laughs> 
I would suggest that um, people be very cautious of the um, position of the federal government right now there, especially with regards to this area um, of discussion. I think that they're, they are, um, we're like the gnats that they're trying to, to um, smack at right now, and they're trying to get as many of us as they possibly can. And so going and, um, and doing things that are going to, um, cause more problems for yourself as as in opening up cannabis clubs and those types of things. If you have no um, family members and you don't have a risk that you're taking, that's a wonderful thing to do to stand up um, for other people. But uh, right now I think it's a very dangerous time in our country. Yeah, it really is. You mentioned the $300 it takes or so to, to outfit you know, your father or your mother if they get moved from place to place. And that kind of opens up, in my mind... This extra judicial punishment that we see of people that are convicted of drug crimes. Uh, Tommy Chong referred to it as diesel therapy when they would ship mm-hmm. him from one place to another, you know, shackled in a bus on a hot day, no air conditioning, as, as just another way of punishing people. Uh, and, and I'm thinking of these expenses. Uh, that that you guys are forced to endure uh, as an extra ju- judicial punishment of the family, it, you know, doesn't punish the 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 people who got sentenced. It punishes the family that loves them. And looking forward, even after their release, after they get out of prison, uh, we've got a situation where you know your mother's a doctor, your father's a lawyer, and with a felony conviction, they can't have their licenses or practice. Their whole career uh, is basically you know starting over from ground zero. Do you anticipate? I mean, that the, the long term that this is going to continue to impact their lives. Oh, absolutely. Now, the good news is that um, we're in negotiations right now, but it looks like my dad is going to be able to keep his license. Oh, Thank good. God. Hallelujah. But uh, mom is not going to be able to keep her license. And so, um, yes, absolutely, this is going to dramatically impact their lives um, for a very long time to come. Uh, and, you know, at least for the next five years, our family, because... Um, you're absolutely right. This is a monthly um, expense that comes on top of, you know, uh, in in our situation, the five kids in my family have stood up and we've gone and taken on extra jobs and done what is necessary to make sure that the mortgage is paid and that the last remaining asset that my parents have is taken care of. Um, however, like you said, that's an extra, you know, expense. And then on top of that, in order, you know, there's little fees like um, they want us to pay, you know, $1,000 for the person who went and investigated my dad's uh, California state license. And little things like that are coming up all the time. So it's, it, it stacks up. And I would assume if we weren't able to pay those types of things that it would come up as a, um, a bill for them once they get out. And that could be a huge struggle if one of them, um, if both of them have lost their professional licenses. Right, yes. right. We have one of our chatters who's mentioning that this is the kind of stuff the general public does not hear. And, and, and I'll give you another here that, that folks, if you're not familiar with the story of uh, Dr. Fry and, and Dale Schaefer here, they were uh, operating in cool California and they got busted on a five-year mandatory minimum charge, which, you know, the feds bring up that five-year mandatory minimum when you trip the 100-plant barrier, right? After 100 plants, it's five-year mandatory minimum. So they usually only bust people when they have more than 100 plants. It's, otherwise, it's not worth their while. To get the 100-plant minimum for Dr. Fry and Dale Schaefer, they added up harvests over years, they weren't mm-hmm. harvesting more than, what, 20 plants at a time, they were telling me, or something. They added them up over yep. the span of years to get that five-year mandatory minimum. The, the depths to which these prosecutors and these people will sink to try to stop people from using marijuana are just unfathomable. What would, if you could talk to these, these people, what would you say to them? Oh, I don't think I can say it on the radio. (laughs) But this is internet. We don't have an FCC guideline. (laughs) I am so, you know, I will tell you that um, the one thing that struck me all the way back in 2001 when the raid was going on is that my understanding, because I grew up in a house where, you know, dad's a lawyer, and then I went on to get my, to get a degree as a legal assistant and then got accepted to law school. So I was on my way into that area as well. And so I had a good understanding of the law, and my understanding is that, you know, there's, there is an issue, and uh, DEA goes out and investigates, they, they collect all the evidence, they go drop it on a federal prosecutor's desk, 
and then they go and prosecute it. Well, that is not the case in our scenario. The federal prosecutor was here in our house, walking around, pointing and saying, get that, get that, get that, get that, to make sure that she was getting the best case she possibly could. Mm -hmm. It was just unbelievable. And um, this was really a very political, very um, vindictive type of um, situation. I think that uh, definitely... My parents really pushed the envelope, but they believed everything that they were doing was absolutely okay. They when all the way back in um, 07 or 08 when, I'm sorry, 98, excuse me, when um, they, when law enforcement originally came to our house, you know, there was a communication that happened between local law enforcement and my parents where they discussed it would be really nice if there was a doctor in our county who would work with us. And so with that, my parents took that ball and ran with it and really did think they were creating that bridge between the people who didn't really understand the law and the law enforcement who didn't really understand the people, mm. you know? Yeah. And so um, they did everything above board as much as they could and out in the open, and it really did just come back and bite them. Yeah. Yeah, really hard just just laid out you know all the evidence that they needed because they didn't believe they were criminals and had anything to hide i mean why would they uh such right. a sad story heather schaefer uh daughter of dr molly fry and dale schaefer please visit their website at free doc fry.com that's f-r-e-e-d-o-c-f-r-y free doc fry.com and uh, terry joyce hollywood Hemptress hour do we uh, have a new one coming up tonight who's on uh, yes, there's a new episode coming up tonight. I just want to let the news- listeners know that to check out the blog, I'm always updating what's going on uh, at HollywoodHemptusHour.com. And I'm also opening a section called Freedom of Joyce, where I'm going to be uh, covering what is going on with the Occupy LA as well. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah, I've gotten involved with the media there. And uh, also we'll be producing some shows, some stand-up and some, some musical shows too out and uh, at Occupy LA as well. And uh, please do... Um, Please um, um, uh, be involved with the Hollywood Hempers Hour page on Facebook, too, and um, we're on Twitter. Right on. And, well, yeah. thanks so much for doing this uh, for us. We appreciate it so much. And, he- Heather, stay strong. I appreciate you coming out and, and telling folks what's going on. Like like our, our chatter said, you know, this is the stuff that a lot of people uh, don't ever hear about this war on drugs, and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. All right, folks. When we come back, we are going to uh, call an audible. We're going to talk to the guys uh, from uh, from the band, from Mighty Haiku, that we played earlier. So stay tuned. This is Normal Show Live. Hey, hey Tokers and Toquettes. This is Radical Russ from Normal Show Live. We're proud to be the voice of the marijuana nation and proud to have you on our team. Now, you can represent NSL in your own Normal Show Live gear from handmadeapparel.biz. Adam Hand of Handmade Apparel is one of us and a huge supporter of our show. He's designed the classic blockhead line of NSL shirts, hoodies, hats, and more. Worn by Radical Russ, Cannabis Carry, and Ganja John on the show and at live events, the designs feature their iconic logos and the It's Got to Be 420 Somewhere in the World tagline. Proceeds directly benefit Normal Show Live and HandmadeApparel.biz, one of our community's strongest supporters. You can also get your Cannabis Cure UK, Ganja John Show, Irie Island Hour, and more gear from the Normal Network at HandmadeApparel.biz. Visit HandmadeApparel.biz today. Hey, this is Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger Seeds, TGAgenetics.com, and you're listening to Normal Show Live. Watch Normal Rocks with Herb Thrasher live from Rolla J Studios every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific with replays Saturday at 7 p.m., Monday at 2 a.m., and Wednesdays at 8 a.m. right here on the Normal Network. Welcome to another day in the life of... All right, welcome back, Tokers and Tokets. Calling an audible here. Instead of the radical rant, I got a note in the chat room from one of our Georgia chatters that we can get... 
The guy is up on the line here from Mighty Haiku, Ricky Raw, Mr. SOS, A Bomb. I, I don't know who we got there. Who's there? We got Ricky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on. Who we got? Ricky, A Bomb? This is Ricky and A Bomb. Right on. Yeah. Glad, glad to have you guys here. How you doing? Very well, how are you? D- d- fantastic. We played some uh, some tunes off of your uh, new CD, the Boom Rap CD that's out. Uh, really digging it, and we got one in the background right now. Uh, tell folks about your band. When you guys get together? <laughs> um, we have three members in our group. If you this guy quick coughing, um, it's Ricky Raw, A Bomb, and Mr. SOS. Uh, we live in East Atlanta, and we like to party and rap about. That we do. Right on, right yeah. on. So, what? Well, been playing a lot lately because I saw I caught you guys at the Capital Cannabis Reform Jam. And uh, how long you guys been supporters of the herb? Oh, man, since the beginning, buddy. Yeah, as yeah. As long as I can't remember. <laughs> as long as you can't remember. I heard the cough when you first uh, got on the line, so I figured you're probably enjoying a little right now, huh? Absolutely. Right on, right on. So, uh, how when when you're down there? I mean, because I'm up here in the Pacific Northwest, you know, the land of green and all, and you know, it's all good for everyone here. I, when I was down there in Georgia, I heard a lot of stories from people talking about how bad the cops were and how tough it is to be a toker down there. Do you got any personal experiences that can give people the flavor of that? Oh yeah, too yeah. many, way too many, way too many, way too many experiences. We, I think, I think together in the group, we probably have good 15 or 20 possession charges and they're just tough down here man that you know it's something a, a quote from one of our songs is it's made of sun and water marijuana shouldn't be illegal no, and, and we feel that way and we're you know we're gonna treat it like it is until it is right on man right on so uh it, lots of lots of charges lots of harassment uh down there in the south when you guys are open and, and honest about uh, marijuana use and, and and its need to be legalized do you feel though that it's changing do you feel like more people in the south are starting to come out and say we're not going to take this anymore um i don't know about the south definitely in atlanta like where i'm from especially um it's 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 trending that way. I think I think just people smoke. You know, I think people are realizing it's not as harmful as people say, and I think it's just more popular now than ever, or at least at least more more up more open than ever. Right on, man. Well, I, I'm digging your tunes, and I want to thank you guys for uh, giving me the download for the new album. And uh, we're gonna go out on on this tune uh, that we got lo- loaded up here, "Day in Life." Uh, and and tell us what your inspirations are for for some of these tunes. Just I guess you know, "Day in the Life." What's going on in your daily life, right? Yeah, and that's pretty much the the theme of our whole album. Okay, they, uh, our new album just came out, by the way. It's called Boom Rap, Mighty Haiku Boom Rap. You can get it on iTunes or or from our Top Spin. And uh, you know, all of our songs are just about a day in our lives, pretty much. Right on. Like like you were saying earlier, we pretty much just rap about what we do in our daily lives. We like to smoke. We like to party. We like chicks. We like to. Have a couple of drinks and just have a good time. It's all so fun music. All right. Well, we'll go out on some good time music here. This is Day in the Life from Boom Rap. Check it out at Mighty High Coup. That's H I G H C O U P. Mighty High Coup.com. They're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, and they're representing Hotlanta. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Hell yeah. Thank you, Russ. All right. Rex crowds like kamikazes. I'm ready to blow. Yo, somebody stop me before I finish the bar and go home sloppy. Because I've been only killed 16 at a time. Make the bass sound clear so you can feel it inside. If your amp dies out, switch your power to mine. Because how cool got the boom for the party to shine. Another day in the life. Yeah. Another day in the life. Let's go. Another day in the life. Hot cool. Another day in the life. It's Ricky. Another day in the life. In the brawl. Oh, that's Mighty Haiku again, MightyHaiku.com, and on Facebook, check them out. Good stuff, loving it. They sent me the clean version. I sent them an email back and said, hey, you know, we got no FCC, man. Send me the dirty version. <laughs> so we'll see if we get that on the air, too. It's all the time we have for the podcast today. Thanks for joining us here. And uh, for those of you listening live in the 1 p.m. hour, stay tuned for Toker Talk Radio at 2 o'clock Pacific time where we take your calls at 971-533-7111. I'll get you my thoughts about Occupy 420 and what we need to do to kind of elevate our movement and whatever else you'd like to talk about, plus some more music. We'll play some more of this Atlanta music that I picked up. I'm really digging on it. For everyone here at the Normal Foundation, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers.
This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Take it on, come on, time. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it. 